Welcome to the SAS video tutorial, what is SAS? So in this video, we're gonna learn what is SAS and we're gonna learn how to navigate through SAS. We're not really gonna program anything, but at least it'll get you oriented in what you're trying to do. Okay, so the first things first, what is SAS? So it's one of the original statistical software programs developed. Uh, so a long time ago, computers were coming out, computations were being done, and they're being done in big rooms by lots of people. People have learned that, wait, computers are good at this. Computers are good at computing. Look, it's in the name. So Jim Goodnight, at, when he was at NC State, was interested in developing some software that would allow people to analyze data easily. So and use this new power of computers to make things work. But at that time, you had to use punch cards. So people would program their punch cards for their data and their programs, and they would put it in this machine, and it would read the cards in. And then this program, SAS, would actually take that, turn it into uh, numbers, do a data analysis on it, and create output. And so it's it's really uh, one of the originals. Uh, it was developed, like I said, at NC State on, I think, across the street on Hillsborough Street, if you're familiar with Raleigh, North Carolina at all. Okay, so it's very widely used when scripted analyses are needed, and especially in a production environment. So the next idea is it's widely used in government, banking, and businesses. And if you are a student at VCU, you enter your information into the Banner system. And the Banner system is a SAS database. So you are using SAS whether or not you know you're using SAS. So keep that in mind. One thing that you'll notice about SAS is most of the analysis routines are what I put in here, quotes, canned. If you've used other programming languages like R or Python or any of the uh, common programming languages, you actually have to ask for what you want. SAS is a little bit different. You write the syntax and you're actually writing the analysis and it just gives you all kinds of output. So you have to sift through the output and you have to know what you're looking for. So just keep that in mind. So some people love SAS because the routines are canned. I don't need to remember a whole lot in order to make things happen, where if you're using some other software, you have to remember a lot to make things happen. Uh, it has excellent support. Nobody ever said SAS has poor support. Uh, it's a very expensive program. You pick up the phone, you call SAS, and they will help you through it. Some companies uh, have such a big an account with SAS that SAS actually has their employees on site in the company so that they can help them with their problems as they come up. Uh, they have excellent training opportunities. So if you're interested in learning a lot about SAS, you can look through their opportunities to go to SAS training. Uh, companies have these all the time, and they're training. I've been through a couple of the training uh, seminars. They're really good, and I would highly recommend if you're really going to use SAS to go to some of these. You can also get SAS certified on various things. And this is also an excellent for production analyses. So, for example, if you are a company and you want to run a specific type of statistical analysis every single night on the day's data for what you were the data before, the day before, you could easily put this in a production system. It'll run on a server. It reads in all kinds of data. So if you have data streaming into your database, you can have SAS reach into that database, grab the information, do the analysis, and produce a report and have it back at you by the time you would show up the next morning and it can be put in some sort of batch at night and you would never even know it's happening uh, and that's really good for that because it's really robust and really strong uh, my biggest complaint with SAS, as i have a big complaint with everything is SAS is really expensive so with all of this excellent support excellent training excellent production uh, opportunities, the easy uh, analysis because of the root canned routines, you, you're, that's what you're paying for. And you have to keep that in mind whenever you want to complain about how much it costs. All right, so why don't we jump over to SAS now and have a look at what it actually looks like and see how to navigate around it. Now that we've jumped over to SAS, let's have a look around. So SAS is very uh, intuitive in the sense of there's lots of windows that you can use. It's pretty straightforward. There are three windows that you really have to worry about, and then there's some others that are really helpful to have around. Okay, so the first one is the editor window, and it's down here, and this is where you'll type in your code whenever you're programming in SAS. Now, up here is the log, and the log is where all of the information about the running of your program is. 
and any errors. It doesn't produce output, but what you have in here is information about how fast the processes are running, if there's uh, any uh, warnings, such as something went weird. All of that can be found in the log because it's telling you what has happened. And then the third one is the output window. And there's a different versions of the output window that you'll see pop up as we go through this tutorial, not just this one, but many of the other videos. Uh, the outputs will come out in a window and they're easy to get a hold of and easy to use, okay? So what we wanna do here is let's look at the log again real quick and notice it tells us something about how long it took SAS to start up. It says SAS initialization. It took 5.9 seconds to actually from the time I press SAS for it to pop up and how much CPU time did it actually use to do this? And it only used 0.49 seconds. So really, really fast uh, in loading up. Now with that said, SAS is a really big program. So if you do get SAS, it, it's a big program. It's gonna take up a lot of space on your machine, but that's okay. Okay, so the other things that you would probably be interested in looking at is the Explorer window. So this is where you can go and look for specific files, folders, whatever. So we have libraries. Um, these are places that things are stored. So a lot of these are needed by SAS. But the work library is the most important library for you at first because whenever you're creating new data sets, they automatically get put in the work library. Now, that's great, but it's also bad because it means that it's going to put it in the work library. But when the work library or when the SAS closes, the work library empties itself. So it's just gonna delete anything that's in there. So if you've been doing a lot of work and for some reason the power goes out, the work library is gone, okay? Or for example, you forget to write out all of your results, the work library is gone. But if you have your code, then you can just rerun it all again and it'll populate the work library. But that might take some time. Uh, you can also create new libraries. There's a way up here, right here that you can click. This little uh, icon, it'll allow you to create a new library. If you click it, we can do this real quick. And you would just give it the name of the library. And I'm just going to call this desktop because that's where this library is going to be. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And here's the desktop. You put the path to it. You don't click on a file. If you click on a file, it's all going to freak out. You put the path to it. You say, okay. And sure enough, I have a new library called desktop. And if I look in desktop, there's nothing there, which means that there are no SAS data sets there. That doesn't mean there's nothing on the desktop. It's specifically looking for SAS data files. All right, you've also got a results tab down here. Now this results tab is where all of your results will be indexed so that you can sort down through them and select the results that you want. The Explorer window, one people place people get lost in is okay well how do I go back up this is where you would go back up is this right here now if you look across the menu options there's lots of menu options for SAS so we have new close uh, new program open program import data and export data those are really really handy uh, let's see there's an edit so you can copy items this is the view, so it'll say, well, what happens if I accidentally close the log? I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't look at it again. Well, you just come and hit view, and then the log will pop up. Okay, so don't panic if you lose it. Uh, there's also tools, so there are query tools, table editing, you can graphics edit. So if you create some graphics, you can edit it on here. There's an image editor, a text editor. There's some options down here that you can use as well. There's all kinds of things you can do. There's solutions, there's analysis solutions. So if you're more of a point and clicky type person, there's a whole bunch of analyses that are already canned in here as well that you can use. Uh, and there's ways to just sort through your windows and have them reorganize themselves. And of course, help. And the help in SAS is not actually that bad. It's not that great. It's designed for people who know SAS. It's not designed for people who don't know SAS. So when you're using the help, if you're just starting out, it's quite frustrating. But once you get the hang of how SAS works, you'll see how what you see in the help relates to what you're actually doing. Okay, so now we've got some sense of what SAS is. We can move on to the next video and start learning about SAS.